right, so hey guys, what's up? It's Cheyenne here, and in today's video, you are going to be paddocking with me. And we are paddocking. She hit the high note for Dave Zito. I have to get moving. We're running a little bit late, and we need to head down to the paddock. So, first things first, is I'm going to go get my camera propped up somewhere so you can watch me get this horse ready. Okay, so first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to brush the horse up, make them all nice and pretty. Um, I usually try my best with this. I'm not a professional by any means, but you know what we try. It's a tried effort here, always and forever. I got this paddock because Zito just sent me a text being like, hey, would you like the paddock? And I said, sure. You gotta be in the paddock by 2.30 because there, we have blood gas. And basically what they do is to test the horse's blood, make sure nothing sketchy is going on. So that's why they blood gas. So I try to just make sure I get all of the straw out of their mane and tail and just get all the like dust off of them. Oh, and by the way, um, this isn't a tripod. This is literally my phone being propped on a trash can being held up by a water bottle. Very iconic, by the way. Courtesy of uh, the Norris stable or Robinson stable, something along those lines. Anyway, because they're all brushed up, then you start throwing the harness together. At least this is how you, what you do for Zito. He usually has the saddle pad and the lines off and right now I'm showing a video of me trying to put it together. Let's just say it took me a minute because I got the lines like all wrapped up underneath the saddle pad. It wasn't a fun time by any means. Right now here's the closer look of the harness. Here is the buxton, the saddle pad I was talking about, the lines, the bridle. This horse wears a choke plate as you can see. Ignore the audio it being really bad. Uh, my mic decided it was a good idea to like die halfway through recording this because as you can tell this day is a little bit dysfunctional, like myself, but it's okay. We're just gonna keep working through it as we always do. I'm gonna prop you guys back on the trash can being held up by a water bottle, because that's an iconic location. This horse is a pacer, but we're not gonna put the pacing hobbles on until we get down to the paddock, because Zeta already took the bucket down, and that's just how he does things. One thing you guys will learn, um, by or that you maybe have learned by watching my videos, is that every trainer does something different every single one they all do something different with their horses and there's nothing wrong with that because i mean as long as they're racing and they're racing good and they're happy and healthy that's all that matters you know there's multiple ways to get to the answer four right like you think okay well three plus one equals four or zero plus four equals four or two plus two equals four they all equal the answer four so harness racing is kind of the same exact way there's multiple ways to do things, but it doesn't mean that that certain way is right. Now we're just gonna put the rest of our equipment on real quick. I probably should wait to put the bridle on her. We have it just set like this to go down to the paddock. Obviously we're not gonna have the stall halter and the race halter on the race, that's a no-go. You don't want the harness in the middle of their back because that's uncomfortable. You wanna try to make the harness comfortable for the horse. So, luckily, it looks good. It's not like in the middle of the horse's back, so you don't have to adjust the crouper or anything. And you get the bucks in. AKA, if you're a riding horse person, I've grown up being a riding horse person like my entire life. We don't call this a buckskin, we call this a breast collar. Potato, potato, it's like literally the same thing. Anything you do on one side, you should do on the other. Then we're gonna move on to the lines. How good. The most important thing, the thing you're able to steer your, the horse with. What you do on one side, you do on the other. You don't wanna have only one line hooked because you can't steer the horse with only one line. There's probably some people that could, but um, I'm not one of those people and I wouldn't recommend doing it. It's ready to go down to the paddock. But what I'd like to do during this time is to check to make sure I have everything on correctly. Cause there's been times sometimes you're hurrying and you miss something. All right, we're all good and ready to go. I'm gonna unhook those cross ties and we're heading out. All right, so we made it down to the paddock all in one piece. Uh, the reason why I didn't like vlog me going down to the paddock, I don't have my GoPro on me and I'd rather focus on driving the horse down than vlogging. And the last time I brought her down, she spooked at somebody uh, towing their horse up the hill. So we wanted to make sure we weren't gonna get dumped out of the jog cart. So right now I have her girth loosened up, her number is on, uh, I took her bridle and stuff off. Right now, currently we're just waiting for blood gas. The pacing hobbles are over there, we're gonna put those on in a minute. Okay, so I guess they're not doing blood gas because I've been sitting here for like, 15 minutes and they haven't walked over yet. They just finished with the fifth. I think they're about ready to go out with the sixth. Most of the time, um, trainers will either go four or three races out. Sometimes they'll do two trips. Um, it just depends on the trainer. Zito usually either does um, four races out when it's like summertime. And then if it's cold, he'll do three races out uh, to warm these horses up. 
Uh, they all warm up to, so the judges and stuff can see them to make sure they're not like crippling lame or anything. So right now I'm going to show you where the horses check in at and then we're gonna go find Zito. So there's usually someone sitting in that chair and then they'll like check you in and write down what time uh, you signed in and then they will write down your name and your license number and all that. And I was right, they're just calling out the sixth race right now. Now we're gonna go find Zito. <laughs> Excuse me. He basically said this horse is going to warm up after the eighth race. It's going to be three races out. He's going to warm up his other horse after the seventh race because that one is in the 10th and this one is in the 11th. They are back to back. That's why he needed me to come in paddock today uh, because obviously as much as any groom which is they were that good at paddocking two horses back to back, it is quite difficult. I don't need to get this horse ready until like they call five minutes to the eighth. You don't want the horse sitting around with a tight girth and it, it being all bridled up and stuff. You just want them to try to be as relaxed as possible when they're down here in the paddock. I will probably will get her ready a little bit beforehand just so I can get the hobbles and stuff on. One thing you will learn, it's a lot of a uh, hurry up and wait. It's a lot of sitting around, but it's okay. As long as I get to spend time with pretty horses, huh? She's not paying attention to me. She don't care. She's focusing. You're going to win today, right? You're going to win? Are you going to win? Hopefully, hopefully, that'd be nice. She did win the first time I paddocked her. She was like 40 to one odds, it was insane. Okay, so we're now getting ready to put the hobbles on. Okay, just gonna make sure all these hangers are flat, 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 because I have a tendency of getting them all twisted before they go out. That's flat, 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 good deal. Also, we're gonna make sure we tighten that loose girth that we have because you don't want it to go sideways when he's warming up. That's a no-go. She's all ready to go. Warming up right now. Trying to get some halfway decent pictures for a, for a thumbnail. We'll see how that turns out. So over here they got judges to make, checking to make sure that none of these horses are lame or anything. Making sure that they look good. Also we have a state vet as well, wherever he, she, it is, they're somewhere. <laughs> And also we have a paddock judge over here as well, checking to make sure that nothing is wrong with the equipment and everything that is supposed to be on the horse is on the horse. Like if the horse is a pacer and it's supposed to have pacing hobbles, the pacing hobbles should be on the horse to go out to race. So as you can see, these are all the horses in the 11th race that are warming up right now. And then right there is the uh, starting truck. We used to have a starting car, but they upgraded it. All right, so her little footsies are sprayed off. Uh, since it's a little chilly, I just sprayed from the belly down. Made sure I got in between her back legs because the sweat usually builds up there. And right now, the, we are currently in the pee stall. We're waiting for her to pee. I can't whistle, so we're not even going to attempt that right now. summer on the inside the one snuff enough Hanover fourth up on the outside comes the eight always be true into the turn fifth that's three Mays. getting away sixth around that turn is Red River Jane seventh early on as she hit the high note with a single by a 55 and four quick opening half the back stretch sixth on the move as she hit the high note through the pen the solar energy home stretch it's Miss Lucy Ivy the outside delightful summer snuff enough Hanover on the inside snuff enough Hanover and delightful summer those two to the line in 153 and four all right so before I finish this video and say my outro that I say every week there are a couple things that I want to uh, state that I did after the race was over so after the race was over I took her up to the barn I soap bathed her uh, put a cooler on her, gave her a fresh bucket of water. Then I completely soaked and cleaned the harness, hung it back up in Dave Zito's uh, attack room. After I waited for her to dry, I pulled her out, brushed her up, then put poultice on her front legs and grease and packed all of her feet, as well as put heel cream on her because that was what he insisted that he wanted me to do putting away wise. And then I took her halter off and that was the end of my paddock. That was it. <laughs> so... Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I try posting every week. And if I do, I do. And if I don't, I don't. Make sure you guys follow me on my social media. So you're as updated with me in my life. And subscribe to this YouTube channel for more weekly content. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.